Now, before we finish, I mentioned inflammation just a moment ago, and I wanted to end with that. And this would be, once again, a bit of an indirect cause, but it's not one that I I, I didn't know whether I sort of consider it substantial enough to con- to put it in with those first three, the sugar, sleep, and substrate. But in this case, it's the um, the junctions of the intestinal epithelium. I've talked about this before, and I will talk about it much more in the future because it is relevant. You've all heard, of course, of the idea of leaky gut. Normally, the epithelium is a well-controlled layer of cells, and whatever is coming from the gut into the body is controlled by the cell itself, uh, all of the epithelial cells. They will recognize a molecule and say, I know you, you can come in, and it will pull it into itself on that front end and then release it into the body on the back end. So it's very controlled moving through the cell itself. But similarly, the cell is able to look at something and say, you don't belong here, you can't come in. However, ethanol, where there is one cell, imagine another Ben right here by me, shoulder to shoulder bumped in, that junction between the two of us is so tight. The junction between the two cells is so tight that nothing can get through. Ethanol starts to open that up. And now we start to have this paracellular transport. So the cell itself is saying, I recognize you and you can't come in. Oh, and you just slipped right by me. And so the this control of substances be, is compromised. Again, in this case, all because of ethanol. As a point of interest, fructose does the same thing, um, albeit perhaps to a more modest degree. But what should be a very, very tight junction becomes leaky. And now things can get through. And one thing in particular, in particular that I have studied extensively, and you can look up work on this, just go to Google Scholar or PubMed and type in LPS and Bickman, and you'll find a couple good papers on the topic. But LPS is short for lipopolysaccharide. And these are bacterial, um, these are molecules that are on the on the surface of bacteria um, that are abundant in the gut. And while they are okay in the gut, they should not be in the blood. And as they move through this um, this gap between the epithelial cells of the intestine, they get into the body and then cause this chronic inflammation or this systemic inflammation. And what my work found is that LPS will bind particular receptors on cells, telling the cell to increase its ceramide production. So here, once again, we have an indirect effect of alcohol causing insulin resistance, but through this leaky gut LPS absorption or invasion into the blood, LPS causing inflammation, then inflammatory pathways causing ceramide production, and then ceramides reaching a point where they begin to fight the insulin signal, resulting in insulin resistance. So this, if you will, would be the fourth of these indirect causes.